Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have a new ESC and I promise you I'm going to get this ESC because we have tested the all-in-one flight controller from HackRC which connects to this guy. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the specs before we jump into the noise testing. However, this noise testing is going to be quite a bit different. I'm going to kind of go into detail a little bit more and explain to you why testing 4-in-1 ESCs for noise is a bit elusive sometimes. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the specs and then we can just move on. So right now, obviously, it's a 40 amp ESC, which means each ESC is rated for 40 amps, 50 amp burst. It is a Beale Heli S ESC D-Shot 600. So, I mean, that's good, but 50 bucks, I would have rather seen a D-Shot or Beale Heli 32 ESCs because you could a little bit decrease noise by just increasing the PWM frequency inside Beale Heli 32 software. Now, obviously, it takes a 2 to 6S LiPo, and it should take a 2 to 6S LiPo because it's rated for 40 amps, and most ESCs that are rated for 40 amps should, in theory, work to a 6S LiPo. So that's good in that perspective. So a little extra feature, we do have a 5 volt regulator which is rated up to 2 amps and it is a switching regulator, so that's good. Alright, so I think that's it for the specs right now and let's go ahead and just take a look at the board here. So under here we have the... Um, <clears throat> We have the BB2 chips, which are in control of each ESC. Obviously, you got your MOSFETs here. Now, there's something here. Let's actually just go ahead and actually start with the pads first. So here, this is where you would access your 5 volt and your ground if you needed to for anything. Uh, you can do that right there. This is where your battery would go. And this is where also, this also is the raw battery voltage. If you ever needed it, this would be the positive and this would be the ground. Now, you see here, we do have pins. And this comes in a 30 amp version and a 40 amp version. And the pins are for the Hack RC All One Flight Controller because it takes those um, proprietary kind of pins type of things. So you can go ahead and use this with this. And that's how we're going to be testing it in the real world testing. We have tested this flight controller. It tested absolutely beautiful, however, with different ESCs. So this will have to go on the real world testing. And uh, yeah, so let's put this guy to the side. And obviously you got your connector. And in the bag here, they do give you an XT60 connector. They also give you a Rubicon low ESR capacitor, uh, 470 microfarad Rubicon. So that's good. They're expecting some noise. And I'm also expecting some noise. And that's what we're going to dive into right now. All right, so as you can see here, we have a nice large array of capacitors. So this is nice to see, but they're pretty small. But that's also, that's not an issue there. But the, but the main problem with 4 and one ESCs is because the, they're so limited in space. And these are all working together to actually filter the whole ESC. So it's not like separated, like, oh, five caps for this one, five caps for that one, five for that one. No, no, no. All of them are working together for the overall ESC here. Now, this is good and this is bad. So let me explain this. So right now, if we go and test, and that's how we're going to test, we usually test with one motor because I currently cannot afford uh, to, a setup to actually test four motors. I wish I can someday, but at the current moment of time, I can't do that. However, what we can do is we can amplify our testing and that's why we're going to go into detail. Um, I'm going to go into specific detail and show you the theory of how no noisy it could possibly be, but it's just a theory, but it'll give us a good idea of how good this ESC is. So like I mentioned, we're going to be testing one motor and for that one motor, all of these capacitors are going to be working for that one motor. So it might seem like an absolutely insanely beautiful result. However, there will be some hiccups because it's a D-Shot 600 ESC. And what we will do is we'll amplify those hiccups and you'll see them in a moment. So I think that's enough talking right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the uh, noise testing part. I do have the DVR footage also being recorded so we could see that also. And then we come back and we just take a look at the uh, results from the noise on the oscilloscope and then I'll discuss what, what we can see and what do we amplify. So enough talking and let's get started.
All right, guys. So let's go ahead and discuss what we just saw. Now it looked absolutely beautiful, and it was absolutely beautiful. But however, like I mentioned before, all of these are working together. Now there are these points that I'm going to show up right here on the screen, where everything is going beautiful, and then it looks like there's not just one line, like a bunch of lines. So instead of one voltage line, you have like, it seems like you have like three or something lines doing, you know, some crazy stuff. That is a hiccup. And that is the hiccup that we're actually going to amplify. Now on the line, we can consider this, let's just say this is zero volts or full battery. So this would be a perfect line, which is perfect voltage with no noise. However, the current one we had was something like this, doing stuff like this. So it was around two volts up and down. Uh, so four volt amplitude, which means two volts up and two volts down. And each square we're gonna make here is five volts. So if, if the line were to drop to here, that dropped five volts from a full battery. So it's going pretty beautiful actually within two volts of a range, which is actually, it would be almost a perfect test. Now, if it was a single ESC. Now you see these little crazy wiggles every once in a while. Now those are the noise. This is the this is the stuff. This is the nasty stuff you don't want. However, we can see here on we can take a look right dead in the middle. Um and it is jumped up from let's just put my finger here. So as you can see that right there dead in the middle. It's you can see a very solid line that's just, you know, going like this. However, you also see this little sharp line that's about to hit the 5 volt. Now, that part right there, that is you know, that's that's a voltage spike. That's that's an inrush of current. And that is the part we want to amplify. So we can possibly amplify this, you know, I would say around times 3. So if it's going up around 4 volts, um even though it's too much, I think, times three. I, I would say it would be, let's just do it by times two, just to be safe. So let's just say two motors. That could be a voltage spike of eight volts. Now that's still not bad, but that's only a theory. That's like possibly best or worst case scenario. It's right there in the middle. I'm not going too extreme, I'm not going too soft on it. <clears throat> so that that's the part where uh, this is the hiccups that I'm talking about, where you get these nasty sharp voltage spikes. Even with all those capacitors, we still had a, you know, escaped sharp point. So the caps couldn't handle that one and didn't, or didn't have enough time to cut it off and just clean it up a little bit. So that's what we see here. And that's why I, you know, if it was a D-Shot 1200 ESC, we would have had a better result, actually. Even with the same hardware, uh, just it to run faster, it would have caught that a lot quicker and knew what to do with the motor so we don't have, you know, the collapsing magnetic field just in rush that voltage back into us. It would have done it, it would have not have hiccuped this bad because it would have caught itself and smoothed it out itself, knew what to do with the motor. So that's what we see here and that's what we could amplify. So in theory, it's not testing that bad, but it's, this is all a theory and um, it just gives us some kind of reading. Now, I, I'm not telling you this is the best ESC ever. I'm not telling you this is the worst ESC ever. I really don't know. I think it's going to be a little bit below average or possibly close to average, but time will tell and uh, we'll see how that goes on once we build it and take it out for flight. So if anyone's used this, please let us know down in the comment section. Um, you know, let others know, let us, let everybody know. And that's the whole point of these videos for everyone to know what kind of product you're purchasing and what to expect and hopefully have a correct uh, testing result for everyone to uh, basically not waste their money. So if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I really hope I helped you guys out there. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.